I want to get with you guys on what I feel like is a very, very important topic this morning. I feel like that um, there's a lot, a lot of people that are just mostly enduring serving God and not enjoying serving God. And most people put a pretty smile on their face, but they're not happy. Most people go through life unhappy. The other day I was talking to someone, and it was the greatest joy. You, some things you look, you'll look back on your life, and you'll remember certain things. You know how it is? You, you look back on your life, and there's certain things that really, really stand out to you. Well, this will probably be one of those things that will probably stand out to me. It's someone that I have been, believed for their life to change probably, you know, 15 years. And they called me. It was pretty late at night. And they called me. And they were talking to me. And they were so excited. They said, do you have a Bible? I thought, well, you know I have a Bible. (laughs) Can you get it? I said, well, it's right here. Turn to this. Turn to this. And I turned to it. And they preached on that for a little bit. They said, now turn to this, turn to this. And they preached on that just a little bit. Turn to this, turn to this. And they preached on this just a little bit. Well, now I've been believing for this for like forever. And they were so excited about the word. I mean, this went on for almost two hours. I mean, like daylight and dark. They talked to me about the Word. They talked to me about the Word. They just kept going on and on and on. And did you know it said this? And did you know it said this? And did you know this? And did you know this? And did you know this? And I just kept going on and 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 on about it. And I just sat there and listened to them. And I couldn't say anything because you could tell this had gotten real to them. You know, when the Word gets real to somebody, you don't have to try to sell them on it. You don't have to try to wonder if it's real to them. You know if it's real to them. Well, in, in about another hour, they called me back. I mean, it, it hadn't been an hour. They called me back. And they say, I don't know what's wrong. I say, what do you mean? They said, everybody's not excited about this as I am. I told them, we're going to have a Bible study. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I just want them to be as happy as I am. I just want them to feel what I feel on the inside. Why don't they get it? And I thought, ding! I've been trying to tell you this for, you know, ding! So what happened? They finally got to a point to where they got in the Word for themselves. Wasn't somebody trying to sell them something? Wasn't somebody trying to push something off on them? Wasn't somebody trying to convince them of something? Wasn't somebody trying to make them do something? They had been saved four, five, six years. But their life wasn't changing. It was staying the same and they were miserable. But why the change? Why the change? Something on the inside. Down in here. You know, I've dealt with youth. I've dealt with married couples. I've dealt with parents and kids. I've dealt with a lot of situations, even before we became pastors. Pastoring, everybody told us it was going to be this horrible thing. 
of dealing with situations and stuff, but we were dealing with all of these situations before we became pastors. So none of them surprised us. I mean, just this week, for instance, we've dealt with a funeral. Another dear friend, pastor of ours, uh, is really severely sick, wondering if they're going to make it. Two of them, actually. Uh, one pastor had affairs. and I mean, just the list has just gone on and on. Plus, three-quarters of our staff gone. Plus, you know, just a list of things, you know. And um, you deal with all these things, but you deal with them because you've learned what the source of them is. And most things are not complicated. Most people try to complicate things real bad. But most things come back to two things. Most things come back to people are condemned with their self and they're scared. And they don't know God. That's why they're condemned and they're scared. Because they don't know God. And they don't know the Holy Ghost. When you deal with youth, they are lashing out bitterly because they've been hurt somewhere. And what happens immediately? Walls. Now, why would it be any different for an adult? They're afraid somebody's going to hurt them. So they don't let anybody in. Or they're afraid that if you get too close, you're going to find out something that they did. Hurts. So most people go through life unhappy but there's ways to fix stuff there's ways to be happy I'm not unhappy up here today and I dealt with all that stuff and I dealt with all those people and I deal with one or two things during a week right but I cannot let people's problems become my problems. I can love them, but I can't let their problems become my problems. I mean, we were in the minister's meeting and somebody called. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. You must call us now. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. I mean, we're in meetings. One particular day... Kathy DePlanis and I sat there and we counted it up. Now, how many hours did we sit today? I think it was 17 and a half. Now, when do we have time to make phone calls? Now, I found out what the situation was and I had to make a choice. Is it more of an emergency for me to be fed to deal with situations that arise? Or... Is it an emergency for me to deal with this situation? So you know what they did? They called somebody and tattled on us. There's nobody they can really tattle on us to. You understand that. But it was an emergency, they thought, because they messed up their life. So it becomes our emergency then. But there's ways to fix it. And I'm here to tell you about them today. I'm here on a mission. (laughs) Because you don't have to be unhappy. You know, when you have a toothache and you keep taking Tylenol or sticking Ambisol on it, 
and you really need a root canal? What good's that going to do? How long is it going to last? One day you're going to find yourself curled up in a ball in the floor. Because it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Because you're not fixing the problem. You're covering over it. And the word says to him that knows to do good. And does it not? It's what? Sin. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's what? Sin. Whoa, you didn't say that right. It's what? Sin. Okay. Y'all said it. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at some stuff today because I want us to be real clear about some stuff. Most people in their lives have put Tylenol and Ambisol on a root canal. And by that I mean they refuse to fix the problems in their life and try to dump them off on other people. Let me explain. Most people are totally insecure. You might as well say amen. It's you sitting there. I was. I put my husband through pure H-E-double-L because I was totally insecure. I gained weight because of it. I got bitter because of it, because I was totally insecure. He would tell me, he'd say, Phil, you're smart. I'd say, yeah, right. You're pretty. Yeah, right. You can do anything. Didn't believe anything he told me. But the devil tell me, you're a dummy. You can't do nothing. I'd wallow in it for days. Because I didn't believe in myself. I didn't like myself. Because I was insecure. And if you don't like yourself, you ain't gonna like nobody else. And ain't nothing nobody else does ever gonna make you happy. It don't matter how many dozens and thousands and billions of flowers your husband buys you. You ain't never gonna be happy. And it don't matter how many cakes your wife makes you and how many wonderful dinners she makes you, you ain't never going to be happy. Or how much money you have. Or how many cars you have in your driveway. Or how many million-dollar homes you live in. If you don't like you, it's all for nothing. And I would venture to say a big part of the people in this room and on the internet have not learned to like themselves. And the reason that I say it is because of all the divorces, all the affairs, all the bitterness between husbands and wives. How many of you can say, if you think I'm kidding, how many of you can say in this room that before you came here to church, your marriage was on the rocks. I'd say a big portion of people. They're all over the place. In the back, they were raising their hands. I know mine was. I, you know me well enough to say, before I started serving God, I was about to go belly up and under. 
You can't make it. People are ashamed to admit it, but, you know, it's a fact. Because people are selfish. They want people to give them what only one person can give them. So let's get into the Word now and find out how we get that. If you have people pulling on you, I know for the position that we're in, we have people pulling on us night and day. You have staff. We don't as much as some people because they've learned we won't do it, but used to we did. If you didn't stroke them once a week, once a day, they were out of here or they'd pout. If you didn't tell them how wonderful they were and how good a job they were doing and how much you believed in them and you wouldn't keep them. Spouses, like I did Keith, constantly trying to get pull on him. If I wasn't with him 24 hours a day pulling on him because he was supposed to be getting ready for services or he was supposed to be doing this and me putting pressure on him to spend time with me constantly when he was supposed to be getting ready for services and mad because I wasn't getting all of his attention and then I was fussing at him when I was with him because when he wasn't with me, he wasn't giving me attention. You got parents, grandparents. Their kids go see them the whole time they're with them. They're fussing because they wasn't happy because when they was with them, they didn't come see them. You got kids mad because their parents don't spend time with them today. Everybody has got to find Happiness within their self. And I want us to find that place where we can find that happiness today. I had to find it. So I know whereof I'm talking about. And until you find that place, there's not a person in this outside world that will ever, ever, ever satisfy your needs. It will be like putting Tylenol on a root canal. Nothing will ever fill that need. But this. So let's look at some scripture this morning. Luke 24. The title of my message this morning is Why Do We Have the Holy Spirit? Why? Did Jesus tell us he was leaving us a promise? And why did he tell the disciples it was so important that they wait at a certain place? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Why is the Holy Spirit a part of the Godhead? I know I was raised a certain denomination, and Keith makes fun of me. He said the only thing I knew about the Holy Spirit is he was over here somewhere. (laughs) Most of you know less about him than me. But he must be pretty important if he's a part of the Godhead. We all know Jesus is important. We know the significance of Jesus, right? What is the significance of Jesus? He came. He died for our sins. He went to hell. He rose again. He brought his own blood so that we could be washed and clean. 
And unless you accept him, you go to hell. Very simple. That's pretty important to me. He paid a price for us. He had a very important role, don't you think? You got God. And you got Jesus. Now this next person here seems to be as important as Jesus. Correct? But we have not paid as much attention to him. Why is that? We kind of have ignored him. So therefore, he has been of absolutely no value to us. When you ignore something, it does you no good. It's kind of like this. When it comes to this, I have been pretty stubborn. I tell you all my faults, so you don't ever tell me yours, but you know. All right, here it goes. It's kind of like I can hire a new employee. And when I hire this new employee, they're supposed to take tasks off of me. Well, it only took me two years to give Dave some of my tasks. Because I think I'm the only one that can do them good enough. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think that if I turn them over to somebody else, it's not going to quite be handled just exactly the way that I want it done. Because I don't quite trust them enough. Because I'm me. Right? Well, why is that? Because I don't know this man, Dave Vaughn. I don't know him at all. I don't know what he's capable of. I don't know his strengths. I don't know if he's ever done it before. I don't know if he can do it. But most of all, I don't know if he's going to let me down. You ever hired somebody new? You ever felt that way? You ever have kids? How many of you have kids? You ever turned anything over to them? You ever wondered if it was going to get done right? Same principle. It's the same thing. We don't trust the Holy Ghost because we don't know the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Let's read some scriptures about it. Luke 2449, King James. And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Let me read it to you from the... Well, yeah, turn to Acts 1.8 and then we'll do it this way. You'll understand it a little better this way. Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power. Put the Amplified up on the screen for me, guys, before I read it. Oh, what's that next part? Ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power, ability, efficiency, and might. (laughs) 
Now, the disciples thought they had it pretty good when Jesus was with them. Because Jesus knew it all and could fix anything. Right? But he left them. It was a sad day. But he told them to wait for a promise of something better. Now, how can you have better than Jesus? How many of you got more than two kids? Okay. If you have more than two kids and all three of them are screaming at you for an answer at the same time, can you do it? Can you answer all three of them at the exact same time? It's impossible. But we're going to find out who can. Let's keep going. I want to read you some scriptures and then we're going to get into some real details so that you'll be real clear about this. John 14, 16. In the King James. Most of these guys in the back are in the King James. We'll read and amplify it in a minute. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another, another comforter, and he may abide with you forever. Then, verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Now, Jesus was teaching his disciples, but this says the Holy Ghost will teach us what? All All things and will bring all things to our remembrance. Have we used the Holy Ghost? They say we only use how much percentage of our brain? 10%? What percent of the Holy Ghost have we used? Yeah. Look at John 16, 7. Let's look at the Amplified on the screen, guys. I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable. Now, how can it be profitable for Jesus to go away? Good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I go not away, the comforter. Now, what does comforter mean? Counselor, helper, Advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. I can't see in your natural, in my natural mind, and in your natural mind, how it couldn't be better just to have Jesus by the hand. You think that, don't you? You sit here and you think, boy, wouldn't it be good if we just had Jesus with us? He could just answer all of our questions. He could help us. He could, if Jesus was here, he would help me through this. I know he would. He loves me that much. Jesus would do this for me. He'd fix it for me. 
right? How many of you would say that? Now, be real. How many of you, when you've been in trouble, you would think, if Jesus were here, if I could just talk to Jesus. If I could just talk to him. If he was here, like, with the disciples, you know? And I could just talk to him. Like I can talk to Keith. I'd ask him, Jesus, how do I do this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this mess? Jesus, what do I do? Tell me, what do I do? I know you got all the answers. I mean, you're God. You got all the answers. Help me. And he says, Jesus says, Phyllis, it's better for you. But I'm gone. There's somebody better for you. No way, Jesus. Now, you may be smarter than me, but how can it be better? I mean, I can see Ashley right here. I can sit in her lap. I can hold her. Ashley, tell me the answer. Come on, tell me. Tell me. Come on. Look at me. You can, I can see your face. Tell me the answer. Come on. I can put pressure on her. Right? But Jesus says no. Are we going to call Jesus a liar? He says, it is profitable for you. So if it's profitable for us, we should find out how it is profitable for us, that it's better for us if Jesus is gone. I don't think we found that out. I think in our heart of hearts, we have continuously felt year after year, It would have been better for us if we could sit here and talk to Jesus every day. If we would be honest. Because I know what it feels like to talk to Keith every day. And if we'd be honest, it would be better to see him and ask him questions. But he says it's not. And he's smarter than us. So let's find out how it's better for us. You want to? Let's do it. All right. King James says that he is a comforter. You ever needed comfort? You ever lost a child? Let me ask you a question then. You can have a room full of people, including your spouse, and they cannot comfort you. I've been around people. They can try. They can do You've lost a close family member, a brother or a sister, a mother or a dad. They cannot, can they comfort you? They cannot comfort you, can they? They can't. But there is someone that can comfort you. It doesn't matter how much a person hugs you. It doesn't matter how much they hold your hand. It's in here. Where does the Holy Spirit live? Turn to 1 Corinthians 3.16.
What time did I start? 10 till 12? Yeah, follow the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in who? Me. Me. The Message Bible says, and it's really, really good, this is how it's more profitable. Look at the screen, the Message Bible. Read it with me. You realize, don't you, that you're the temple of God. And God himself is present in you. Now, that's better than Jesus being beside you. Because Jesus would go off to himself and pray sometime. And you couldn't even get to him. But if God is inside you, you are never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, ever in a situation that you are without him. There's never a moment in time, day or night, ever an instant, ever a situation that you are without God. Therefore, there's never an instant that you're without comfort. Your friends and your family and your brothers and your sisters after three days of a funeral, we'll be gone. And that's when the real pain begins. Because you're numb the first few days. And you hardly even know what's going on. But it's the week later when you realize in real life this person's gone. They're not coming back. What does it say? The comforter lives where? So how far do we have to go to receive comfort? Now let me tell you what comfort, comforter means. A person who reduces the intensity of fears and calms and pacifies. Now the Holy Ghost is not an it. He is a person just like Jesus and just like God. And he is alive and well inside of you and me. And he has all the answers and he has all the comfort. And he will pacify you. And maybe you didn't lose a loved one. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Maybe your husband cheated on you. Maybe your spouse cheated on you. Maybe you just need comfort because you need comfort. And you're looking to other people to give you that comfort. And you're putting ambasol on, on, on a tooth that needs a root canal. Because they can't give it to you. The Holy Ghost is the only one that can fix your heart. And if you're looking out here for people to fix it, you will be disappointed. Because they do not have the answers. And if any person gives you an answer that comforts you, it's because they sought the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost told them the answer. And it's not fair to them that you continuously seek them to hear from God for you. Because you have the same Holy Ghost living inside of you. So he's a comforter. What did the Amplified also say he was? 
Put the Amplified John 16, 7 and just keep it up there for a little bit. He is a counselor. A counselor is someone who gives advice about problems. You never, ever, ever, never need advice, right? You know, if you go to other people for advice and they give you wrong advice and you follow it and you mess up, it's your fault. Because Jesus says, I send you something better. And it's living inside you. And you can go to him. Because he is a counselor. The dictionary that I was... I looked at a bunch of dictionaries last night. And it said, a shrink. (laughs) You feel like you have mental problems? That's what the dictionary said a counselor was. You feel like you're about to lose it? He's got the answers. Thank you. They... Today's society, I tell you, you laugh about it, but how many in today's society do they have on mind-altering drugs? What about your kids? What are all those things? ADD and all these other things? You can fix all that. They got the Holy Ghost. It also said... Get this, marriage counselor. He's got the answers. He is a counselor. He will give you the answers. But there's a little bit of a problem here. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is why people take the remote now. Okay? I've got a big screen TV up here. The Holy Ghost says, okay, I'm your counselor. You turn the TV on. You come to him. You say, Holy Ghost, I need your help. Tell me what to do. I need to hear from you. We're about to get a divorce. Can't take it anymore. And he says, quit being so bossy. (laughs) Turn off that TV. Don't want to hear it anymore. And not do it. Because you don't want to hear it. The Holy Ghost can only help you as much as you listen. And he's not going to push you. And he's not going to demand that you do anything. He's not like the devil. He's a gentleman. He will give you the answer. What you choose to do with it will totally be left up to you. Now, when he told me, Phyllis, you want your marriage to work? Quit being so stinking rebellious. I turned the TV off bunches of times. But one day I had to make a decision, which I wanted worse, the rebellion or the marriage. And you have to decide. People in life try to have it both ways. They try to have it God's way and the world's way. And they have what I call the oops, I sin syndrome. You got it? Oops. Oh, oops, I sinned. It's like I made a mistake. I had an affair. You didn't make a mistake. You've been cutting the Holy Ghost off time after 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 time in order to wind up in bed with that person. What an oops. It was a purposeful, you got in bed with that person. (laughs) 
it was a, you shouldn't have been in a car with a married woman by yourself to begin with if you're a, a married man. Right. Let me give you a little piece of advice. We live in a society today that sex is all over the TV screen. And most people's hormones are absolutely, insanely crazy. And you would be an absolute fool to think if you're stronger spirit, that you're stronger spiritually than what you are. I know where I am spiritually. I'm not confused about it. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't run around with men. But let me tell you something. I know I'm smart enough to realize if I went in a bar today and started witnessing to people, and I did it again tomorrow, and I'm on a good mission, I'm witnessing to people, and I did it again tomorrow, well, by the next day, my clothes would begin to change, and my talk would begin to change the next day. And something would slip out of my mouth in front of you the next day. Uh Then the next day, you'd find me not really supposing to be having a time to go witness to them, but I'd make it a point to add it into my schedule to go witness to them. Because I was beginning to like the environment there. Then the next day... I'd be pretty provocatively dressed, most likely. And the drinks would be getting a little closer to where I was sitting. And the Holy Ghost would be telling me, Phyllis, it's time you stop and not go back there anymore. And I'd be turning the TV off. And I don't watch anything but G-rated movies. Me, personally. You do what you want to do. You ask my staff what they buy for me. You ask Dave and Kim, Ramsey. I watch G. I can't handle anything else. I'm not mature enough. The other day I bought the fox and the hound. I'm sorry, I can't handle anything else. I'm not okay with... This man's wife getting into bed with this man's husband. I'm not okay with it. Because I know that's how the seeds get in. So by the end of two weeks, the Holy Ghost has been telling me, Phyllis, don't do it. Phyllis, don't do it. I've been to movies with Dino and Cheryl. Dino and Cheryl, what do I do? I get up and go out of the movies... And leave and go into the G-rated movies. You know, they're not watching anything ugly. Nothing. I just don't enjoy it. I just, I don't enjoy it. They're watching PG maybe and it's just fun. It, It may be an action show or something, you know. But I don't like it. By the end of... The second week or something, I'm dressing funny. The glass is getting closer. The guys are getting closer. The Holy Ghost is saying, get away. And I'm ignoring it. But because I'm supposed to be witnessing, God told me to witness to these people. And somebody's got to do it. And I'm strong spiritually. And all the while, the Holy Ghost is saying, get out of here. Get out of here. Run. Get out of here. I don't care how strong you think you are spiritually. When you begin overriding the Holy Ghost, you're you're headed for a fall. Nobody is that spiritual. How many pastors you ever heard had affairs? (laughs) 
Why do they do it? Because they think they're more spiritual. And it can't affect them. But I don't care who you are. You put yourself in places you should not be and you're headed for a fall. You're not that spiritual. And if I'm telling you I couldn't handle it and I spend as much time in the Word as I do, I doubt seriously you can. I mean, I doubt seriously that you can spend endless hours driving with that fellow employee in cars and they're married and you're not. Once or twice is one thing because you need to be somewhere. Or endless hours in stores in private rooms. It's an accident waiting to happen. We have the Holy Ghost to help us to avoid these traps. But we fall into these traps because we don't listen to what the Holy Ghost is telling us. When he says, get out, we think we are more spiritual. But you're never more spiritual than the Holy Ghost. You can't be. He's there to warn you and to lead you and to get you out of these things. Or your temper. He'll tell you, don't do it, don't say it, don't take that money. And you say, oh, when I get my paycheck, I'm going to put it back. And the Holy Ghost is telling you all the while, don't do it, don't take it. But you think you know better. That's why you find Christians in jail. Not because they're bad people. Because they override what the Holy Ghost told them to do. The Holy Ghost is trying to help them. And so then it makes the whole Christian community as a whole do what? Look look like God's not real. Look bad. Because that Christian decided to override what they knew in their heart. Does it mean they don't love God? It means they need to get on their knees and repent. Get things right. Because all the while when you're doing things, the Holy Ghost is saying, stop it. Don't do it. Turn around. Stop this. He's your counselor. He's telling you. Don't do this. He'll counsel you. He'll lead you in the right direction. Same thing with your spouse. He'll say, don't talk about this right now. Don't push it. Don't go there. But you, you got to go. You're going to do it. Your counselor. He'll lead you each step along the way. It's just like you've heard people counselors talk to their counselors and stuff and they tell them things and they tell them things in private they tell them not to do things what do they do anyway they go out and do it anyway so clear on counselor let's go to the next one helper to make it possible or easier for someone to do something an assistant who helps in a task or an activity, an aid. You ever needed help with anything? Ladies, your hair, your makeup, guys working on a vehicle, working on a project. You ever just couldn't get the answer to something? Just got frustrated with it? It's time to ask the Holy Ghost for help. He knows the answer. He'll give you the answer. But have you been asking him? We've not used the Holy Ghost. We've not benefited from his help. Just like I did not benefit from Dave's help when I first hired him because I didn't know what he could do for me. 
But the more you learn what the Holy Ghost can do for you, the more you will use him and use his help. You need to ask the Holy Ghost. I asked the Holy Ghost continuously. I had to ask him all night long. Holy Ghost, keep my computer running. It was on the fritz. I'm telling you what, it was a pill. And it was not a blessing to me yesterday and today. But um, I was saying, okay, Holy Ghost, just a few more hours. Come on, keep it going, keep it going. And uh, we got through it. So, um, but you, you must ask for his help. He will not just come in and overpower you and help you in spite of you asking him for help. You need help with a loan. You need to know where to go. Ask him for help. You need help with a child. You need help with a parent. You need help finding a job. I don't go, sh- I have shopped so much in my life. I don't go shopping without saying, Holy Ghost, where do I need to go? I don't have all day to spend. Tell me what store to go, what door to go in. I've never been to this mall before. Tell me exactly what to do. Help me find a parking place. Direct me right to it. Help me. Help me. Help me to do this today. I've got all this stuff to do. Help me. Show me what needs to be done first. Do this first. Do this first. Do this first. Do this first. Help me. Show me. Help me how to deal with this. Help me when to deal with this. He will show you. Put all this off today and do this today. Get him to show you what to do. All right? Advocate. A person who pleads a cause. A lawyer who pleads your case. Someone who pushes for something. You ever felt like defending yourself? You ever felt like, well, they're just going to know the truth. By golly. I have to tell it. They got to know it. Let Jesus do it for you. Let the Holy Ghost do it for you. Let him plead your case. He can do it better than you. He gets to work on people. They don't have a chance. You get to work on them, you're going to get in the flesh and undo any favor that you have. Even with your kids. Even with your family. Even with your boss, you need a raise. Let him, the Holy Ghost, wake him up in the nighttime. Let him plead your case. Now, you know they're a good employee. They're always the last one to stay, the first one to get here in the morning. They never complain. They never gripe. They work through lunch. Anytime you need something, you know it's done. Let him bring you up before him. Let him plead your case. He can do a good job. You'll bubble it up. Bobble it up, whatever the word is, yeah. (laughs) Advocate. He's a very good advocate. Have you used the Holy Ghost the way you should? Is he important? Is he as important as Jesus? Why don't you believe in yourself? I hadn't forgot about that. How does that apply to the things we've been talking about? What does a person that does not believe in their self have a tendency to do? First thing they'll do is what? They're always defending their self. You ever notice? A person that does not believe in their self, you ask them about something, and you're not even correcting or you're not even doing anything. Like a husband and wife situation. You just go to talk to them. And what's the first thing that happens? Defense. It's a defense. It's a defense mechanism. Instantly go into defense mode. I would do it with Keith all the time. It was like, 
you, you've had so much trouble, it's like the vents. Because you don't believe in yourself, so you know somebody's putting you down immediately. So nobody believes in you, so you must defend yourself. Right? Let him be your advocate. Don't try to defend yourself. Just say, you know what? I probably didn't handle that right. Could have done differently about it. And you'll find a softer side of people. You'll find they'll come more your way. You'll find you do that and they'll be more inclined to give in to you. But you put up that defense wall and what happens to them? They get in defense mode. They begin trying to prove their case. But if you say, you know, I, I probably didn't speak that quite right to you. Sorry about that. I was probably short. I was probably thinking about this and should have said it this way. What does that do to them? It just tears down their defenses. But if you let the Holy Ghost plead your case, and he be your advocate, it tears down all their defenses. Because they're not going to fight with the Holy Ghost. He'll get inside of them and work on them. And even if they say a little bit then, even when they walk away, he's still in there working. You're shut up, but he's still in there working. Because he don't go away. He's still inside them. So let him be your defense instead of you defending yourself. He's your advocate. Intercessor. You ever needed anybody to pray for you? I have. Ever missed it? Ever messed up? Wanted to get things right? Well, you don't have to intercede for Christians. You can pray for them. They're not at odds with God. I mean, we can pray for them. But uh, the outside world, intercession with God, and, and we lift up... Christians in prayer and pray for them, but um, we can intercede for, for non-believers and, and we can, the Holy Ghost makes intercession for us for things that we don't know to pray about because we don't have a clue. So we can pray in the Holy Ghost and intercede in the Holy Ghost ourselves. And he'll plead our case when we've done Things we wish we wouldn't have done. Uh, An intercessor is a negotiator who acts as a link between parties. You have anything going on that you need an intercessor about? The Holy Ghost is the very best one. Don't try to handle it yourself. Ask the Holy Ghost to handle it for you. He can figure it out. You got a divorce situation going on. You got a separation situation going on. You got a uh, job situation going on. People trying to sue you. Ask the Lord to fix it for you. Ask the Holy Ghost to get in there and tell you what to do in regards to that situation. And He'll show you what to do. We're almost done. Stay with me just a minute. Strengthener. You ever needed any strength? Where is your strength? See, most people are are confused about it. The, The strength that you have is on the inside. Jude says, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourself. You build up your spirit, the Holy Ghost, and you will build up yourself. It will help you to overcome anything. It will strengthen you. It says to make stronger. Ladies know about this. You can buy nail hardeners and nail strengtheners. They say to add a board to something, to make it stronger. Reinforce with rebarb. Strengthen it. You ever felt like you were weak and you could have somebody add a piece of rebarb to you to just help you stand up? Yeah. 
Well, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. When you just feel like you just cannot get up and go to work tomorrow. There's something inside of you that you need to pull on. But it doesn't just happen. It comes from you beginning to pray in the Holy Ghost and looking to Him to help you. You can't get up and say, Mully grub, mully grub, mully grub. I don't want to go to work. I hate work. I hate my job. I hate my life. I hate my this. I hate my that. I hate everything. Nothing's working out good. Everything's a failure. Everything I do is a failure. I hate everybody. I hate this. How much better are you going to feel? doesn't come that way it comes by you praying in the holy ghost and looking to the holy ghost you begin to say glory to god hallelujah thank you lord and then and you begin to pray from the inside of you and you'll see in five minutes you'll feel like a different person different than that person you felt like five minutes ago won't even be the same. You'll look in the mirror and you'll say, is that the same person I saw five minutes ago? But you talk depression and you talk down and you talk defeat and that's what you're going to have. You won't change. He can't strengthen you if you won't let him. He's not going to force himself on him. Then stand by. Something that can be relied on when needed in case of an emergency. Now, I've been telling the guys for a while now. Keith and Dave are shaking their heads probably. Look at them. They're a little red, aren't they? Probably a year that I wanted a generator for my house. Look at them. Are they, are they turning? No. They're getting me one. I just haven't told them which one I wanted yet. It's not their fault. It's my fault. But... Um, A standby, like a generator. That when everything else fails, it's still there. How many of you lately when your electricity went off? Generator! You'd like that word. Generator! Yeah. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. When all about you and around you and your whole world around you is crumbling and falling down. Nothing is working. Your mind's not working. Your body's not working. Your brain's not working. The people around you are not working. You get the picture? Nothing ain't working. How many of these houses you said was like that? Yeah. Well, you know what I'm talking about. The water don't work because the lights don't work. And the phone don't work because the lights don't work. So it just kind of affects everything. Right? Well, there's something. That can make it work. It's called the Holy Ghost, and it's a He. And He can stir you up, and He can fire you up, and He can make you work when you can't put this foot in front of this foot, and your brain quit working, and the whole world and all the demons in hell have come against you. And all your family and all your friends and all your bosses and all your kids have gone insane. The Holy Ghost has not. But the problem is, here's the problem. You refuse to get in that bedroom and shut that door and shut that world out and get on your knees and pray. And you won't have it unless you do. The Holy Ghost will help you do all these things. He will be a comforter. He will be a strengthener. He will be a standby. He will be an advocate. He will be an intercessor. He will do all these things in your life. And I couldn't make it five seconds, not at one second, without Him. That is the only way. I make it is with the Holy Ghost. The only way. But I don't go a day without waking up in the morning and telling them, I don't care what you've got going. I don't care what's going. Don't you call me before I call you. I'm not going to answer. And they know it better be a real emergency for them to call me. They don't call our house. Somebody, it, it, if somebody died, it's too late. You're laughing, but I'm 
serious. Y'all take care of it. We'll talk about it in a little bit. I must pray. But if I must pray, you must pray. You need that comforter. This is what turned my life around from being an insecure, rebellious person that could not come out of her room, that didn't want to go anywhere with Keith, didn't want to say anything, refused to get up in front of anybody, was scared, silly to say anything, to being able to do what God had called me to do. And God has things you need to do. And you're never going to do them until you get secure in yourself. You're going to put Anbasol on a root canal. And you're going to look to other people to fix your problems. And you're going to pull on people and pull on people and pull on people and pull on people and get mad at people because they're not there when you need them there. And you're going to get mad at your spouse and mad at your husband and mad at your mother and mad at your father and mad at your brother and mad at your sister because they don't supply all your needs. And they're not El Shaddai. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. He is the strengthener. He is the answer giver. He is the standby. He can fix anything. Anything. Thing. Jesus died for our sins. The Holy Ghost did everything else. Now we've accepted Jesus dying for our sins, but we refuse to live our lives in light of the Holy Ghost doing everything else for us. We refuse to live our daily lives in that. And God did not intend that. He did not leave us basket cases. And we as Christians are living as basket cases. We're showing the world that we're no different than them. Because we refuse to pray in the Holy Ghost. We refuse to. And He's not going to make us. The only way that your life will change is by reading your Bible and praying. The problems you have in your life today, write me letters. Send them all. I welcome you. Send them all. Dave will get them. (laughs) It's your fault. The problems you have in your life today are your fault. God said in Deuteronomy, today choose the blessing or the curse. Choose life or death. You choose. You choose. If you have blessing in your life, that's how much you've chosen to do for God. That's how much you've chosen to pray. That's how much you've chosen to read your Bible. If you have curse in your life, that's how much you've not chosen to put God first, read your Bible, and pray. Because you cannot hear from God if you don't do those things. You're going to do it your way. God himself cannot change your life if you refuse to do these things. He's trying to tell you. He wants you blessed, just like I told you about that person in the very beginning. Why won't these people see it? I want them to have what I have. And that's the way I am. I want every person to be as blessed and happy and prosperous and victorious and overcoming and joyous. And I mean, I could go on and on and on as Keith and I are. I do. And we deal with problems, it seems like, from the time we get up in the morning till the time we go to bed at night. And we still keep our joy. And we still are happy. And some people get a little paper cut on their finger and they're sad for a month. Uh 
is your life. You can live it depressed if you want to. But I encourage you today. You must choose. Are you going to get the benefit out of the Holy Ghost? Like you've chosen to get the benefit out of Jesus? Are you going to get the benefit of Him sending us the Holy Ghost? Now, stand to your feet with me, if you will. And I want us this morning, there's people in here that I know that's not even accepted Jesus in here this morning. And I want you guys in the back, I would like for you to play that song I asked about. And I want every head bowed and every eye closed as we do it. But I want you to check your hearts this morning. Now, you may have been saved at one point in time in your life. But you've been living like you weren't saved. I think there is several people in here like that. And you want to... I'm not saying you're not saved. Now listen to me carefully. Listen to me very carefully in here this morning. I am not saying that you are not saved in here this morning. But for all purpose, as far as it's concerned, you might as well as not be. You've been just as rebellious... You've been just as bitter. You've been just as cold. You've been lying and stealing and cheating and doing just anything that you're big enough to do. You're saved. But that's it. And then there's going to be a whole slew of people that's never even been filled with the Holy Ghost in here this morning. And this will be your opportunity this morning. But I want them to play that song from the back this morning, y'all. So don't play anything. They're going to play this other song. And as they play this song, we're not going to raise our hands. We're not going to do it that way. I had them to stand up to make it easy on you to get out. I want you to make your way to the front. And like I said, there's going to be several people in here that need to be filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. And give God an opportunity. Now, I know there's people in here. Don't let your pride get you. There's people in here. That you've been attending this church for four years and you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. And I don't care if you're an usher or you're in the choir or you're playing an instrument. I want you to get down here because we have talked about the Holy Ghost for almost an hour now or maybe over an hour now. And He is here this morning. And you will be filled this morning. And you will speak with other tongues this morning. So today is your opportunity. Today is your day. Go ahead, guys, play it. On the day of Pentecost, waiting in an upper room, was a group of young believers. Looking for Turn the promise up, soon Like a rushing mighty wind The Spirit fell on all of them And the promise was fulfilled As God the Holy Ghost did give Oh, the power. 
Holy Ghost fed. The Spirit said to Peter, Go down to Cornelius' house and preach to them the gospel. Tell them what salvation's all about. So he spoke to them of Jesus. He had just begun to tell when he was gloriously interrupted as the Holy Ghost fell. He continued to come all over this crowd. There's still people here. This whole front should be lined up. I just know it in my heart. I woke up in the nighttime knowing this, so make your way down here. Until they knew that all was well. And this Tongues, God's glory is dead. Don't be ashamed, that's the devil. For the power and the blessing as the Holy Ghost fades. We all had to do this one time or another in some church, some place. There's not a person in here that's going to look down Paul on you. found certain disciples when he came to Ephesus. And when he asked about the Spirit, they said they hadn't heard of such So he laid his hands upon them And as they opened their mouths wide The Spirit came upon them And they spoke with tongues and prophesied that need to come, six more in this section and three in this section that need to come before we can go on. So you Christians pray that they have strength and boldness to do what they need to do. We don't want anybody to miss out. It's like that person that told me the other night, you want everybody to have what you have. And once you have it, you know how strong the devil is against these people standing there. You know what he's doing in their hearts and minds right now. So, Satan, we take authority over you right now. We bind you up. You will not have any part in this. You will not be able to hinder them. They will come and do this in Jesus' name so they can have the joys that we have and the help that we have in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yep, that's it. Come on down. Don't be ashamed. Come on down. Come on down. We want to wait on you. That's it. Come on. We're going to wait. I'm not in any hurry. No need in being embarrassed. I don't care if you've been here since the day we started the church. It's nothing. That's what the devil wants. It's for you to go through your whole life and never have the Holy Ghost. That's what he wants. That's his greatest thing. Y'all don't mind waiting, do you? Didn't think so. These people are too precious to God. He wants them to have it. 
There's four more people that need to come. We can't make them come, but we'd sure like for you to come. Sure make us happy if you would. They're in this section over here. There's one in this section. Well, we're going to begin to pray and, and don't miss out. I don't want to keep everybody all day, but don't miss out. Don't let the devil convince you to stay back. And uh, if you do decide that you just can't come up here, the Holy Ghost isn't going to make you. I tell you what, there's people all around you that will pray with you. You know, and uh, you can receive the Holy Ghost right where you are. And uh, because most of these people in these usher's coats can pray with you. Most of the people standing around you can pray with you to receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, we don't have to do this in a, in a way that would embarrass you, but it's best if you do it this way because I'd like to pray with you. So uh, let's everybody stretch forth your hands toward these people. And remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't eat for two weeks. It was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I wouldn't take it back for all the money in the whole wide world. And so uh, I tell you, it's the joy of my life when people get filled with the Holy Ghost because I know it will change them forever. So uh, we're going to pray. And uh, you people up here, lift one hand toward heaven because that's where all your help comes from. And uh, we'll release some faith. Say this after me. Father God, I've received you. And if I haven't, I do now. And I accept what you've done for me. That you died on the cross. You went to hell. And you rose again. And that you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And that you've washed away all my sins. And I'm clean. In Jesus' name. Now you said, if I was born again, that I was a candidate to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I receive... That gift, that gift now, now. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Now, as I've come to pray for you, all you have to do to receive a gift is take it. So close your eyes, look to heaven, don't do anything but say, I receive, and begin to pray. Say, I receive, and begin to pray. There you go, that's it, right there. You got it, that's it, right there. Say, I receive. Close your eyes, look to heaven, that's it, right there. That's it, that's it, right there. You can do this. That's it. Right there. Glory to God. Say, I receive. Don't make it technical. You've been thinking too hard with your head. Say, I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now begin to speak. Crowd pray with us. That's it. That's it right there. There you go. You got it. It's all over you. You already got it. He's already got it. Say, I receive. There you go. Say, Open your mouth. You got to use your mouth. That's it. Go, That's it. Right there. All over you. Y'all catch these guys. You got it all over you. That's it. Right there. She's already got it. All over him. That's it. Just speak it out. The more you do, the easier it is. Keep going. That's it. That's it. Gross. That's it. Just keep saying. Oh, make you form your words. There you go. That's it. You should, no, don't just say la la, say a word. It's not a la la, it's a word. From here, not here. That's it, right there. That's it, right there. That's it. Grobre, Sobre, Satara, 
You got it. You got it. Say it. You got to say it with your mouth, though. Do grace today ke shita ta that's it do grace today ke shita ra kra san toro brisita da grace ta take it that's it say it that that's it that's it that's it that's, it. that's all over you da grace ta you already got it da grace ta da grace da da grace no say it don't, don't say english don't say english no english nothing in english Say I receive. There you go. Gross and ta ta. Out of here. Gross and da da ke ta ta. That's it right there. Don't don't cut it off like you just did. Gross and ta da da ke da ke ta. That's it. That's it. Gross and ta da da ke da ta. Tote. Gross and ta. That's it right there. Gross and ta da. No da da gross and ta da. That's it. Don't cut it off. It keeps bubbling up. You keep cutting it off. Da da gross and ta da gross and ta da ke. You keep cutting it off. You feel it coming up, and then you cut it off. Don't you don't think about what you're saying. You're trying to figure out what that word is. Okay, you're not going to know it. Just just say it. Okay. Say to no gross and ta da gross and ta da gross and say ta le gross and ta da gross. That's it right there. Gross. That's it. Say it. Okay. That's it right there. Gross and ta da gross and ta da gross. You got it. That's it. Glory to God. Da gross and ta da gross. You got it. That's it. That's it. Right there. That's it. Right there. No, no, no English. No English. That's cheap. No English. Do re crese say I receive it. In Jesus name. Now say out of here. Gro se te de de crese crese da da te gro de crese de de crese crese no English no English. Do re crese da da de crese da da ro cro so do do gro gro do 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 cro do do no English. Just be quiet. Let's just speak it in tongues. Let it be something else. Gro de de crese da da de that's it. It's coming up right now. Gro de ke da say it. Do re that's it. Gro ke ke crese de da da de se ka gro crese da that's it. It's all over you. Dore ke shi te de kre 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 sombre sandele de kre sa te to kroche te de kre sa ta. Say the other, not the not the English words. Kre sha to 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 kre si te te kre sa te do pro si te. Dere, that's it. Keep it up. Dore ke shi te giri gare kro so to bre si te te. Do kre si te ta te da kre an si te te pro si ke pro. Keep it up. Keep it up. That's it. Dore ke go keep going. Bre kre so do. That's it. That's it. Kro kre kre si. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Dore ke. That's it. That's it. No. That's it. That's it. That's it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Kido kre se te de kri shandele kro se te de kro pro sa te de kri sande. There you go. There you go. Bre kre ke ke shambre ke ke ke. You guys sing some more. Bre kre shambre ke shandele kro se te de kri se te. Okay. Te de kri se te de kri se te de de kri se te de kri. That's it. That's it. You got it. You got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Don't ever say I receive. Don't ever say to the nation, to the nation. Yeah, she's already got it. She's already got it. She's already got it. She's already got it. Okay, say I receive. And don't say anything else in English. Go ahead, don't cross the door. Don't ever say to the nation. That's it, right there. Correct, correct, say to the nation. Correct, correct, say to the nation. Say no English. 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 だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ、だれだけ
You guys take them in the back and uh, minister to them some more. Give them some books on it. Give them some word on it. Give them some encouragement on it. And uh, just follow them to the back and they'll help you guys to understand the rest of this and give you some books, tapes to go with it. Let's give God all the glory for all the things that he's done in here today. some that went and sat down. If you want to go to the back for tapes and books, if you went and sat down, yeah, you're welcome to go to the back. They'll give you some more material to help you understand it, uh, pray better, that sort of thing, and uh, it'll really, really help you. I think the Holy Ghost is going to help us all more, and we'll be a church that He can flow through better, and that's our goal. So uh, we should do that, and uh, I know we went a little long, but we had lots of weeks we didn't even have church. So uh, you guys sing thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, my helper, on Him I do depend. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you. Oh, 